Well, I, I still have a good outlook on life. You have a bad day once in a while, but but I, that minute I realize that's what's happening to me, I just, I start fighting it. I say, I don't want this. Now, these days I feel bad. There's difference, a little difference. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas speaking, flashing to you the news of the world, pictured by Fox Movie Tone. I was a belly gunner on a B-24 Liberator, bomber, heavy bomber. I flew 50 missions in 13 searches. Uh, we didn't have a choice before the war. You got out of school, you was drafted. Or you better volunteer or you're going to be... Uh, I didn't want to march and, and be in the mud with them soldiers. That's the reason I wanted to fly. I thought I was. I thought I. I are you? I thought I was pretty good at math, and I went and, I, and, uh, and right after I got out of the service, and I tried to get in the Air Force a, a pilot. Well, I flunked the math. One part of it I flunked, so they they wouldn't take me because I had everybody. But they told me that I could probably get in gunnery school. So I went and volunteered and got in gunnery school because my name was up for the draft. And if you volunteered, well, you, 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 could, you could get about where you wanted to go if you volunteered. 18. We were being bombed one night, and Bill Bagley was from Brooklyn, New York. And you had to, you know, I don't know if you know how they talk, but they talk much different than we do. And we dived in the foxhole, and there was lizards and everything in there, and you, it was no telling what you'd find in a foxhole when you dove in it on Guadalcanal. And the lizards started crawling on old Bill, and old Bill just jumped up and he said, the hell with the bombs, and run off. <laughs> I remember that as plain as day. <laughs> We've been shot up, shot at, shot and missed, and everything. I, we, one time we come back with a 75 millimeter hole right through the wing. Other time we've had, I've seen holes in our plane big enough to stick your head in. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a true war story. A lot of them get blowed up, but this is not blowed up. As you know how you fly, in the service. How do you fly in a formation? You know how you fly, you got to leave. You got a wingman, a two wingman. We had a wingman flying on us. And he was about as far away from, from you and I as that door. And we was over the target and they got hit. And the plane, when, well, I don't know, it was probably just a minute. And it got out over the water and it blew up and it blew three guys out. And something opened one guy's parachute, I know, because I talked to him later. But he's from St. Louis, Missouri. And as I went back down to Guadalcanal, he was in the hospital and I was going down to New Zealand on R&R. &R, and, &R, and I stopped in and seen him. And he handed me the newspaper and they said, Lives to Tell, a St. Louis Dispatch, the headlines. And he had been blown out of the plane and he didn't even, 
nothing to remember anything, and it blew his parachute open. And another guy, now I remember old Palmer, he jumped out over the target, <coughs> and I could still look back, and they were shooting at him as he came down. Japanese, that was the war in the Pacific was a dirty war. It was a very dirty. Uh, if, if you bailed out, they was going to try to kill you while you was in your parachute. And that's just the way it was. And I rented the G2 and we got back and I they, they in, interrogate you after every mission to find out what happened, what you've seen and what they could verify and everything like that. And I told them that old Palmer, I, I knew he was dead, I knew they hit him on the way down. Well, the last year, last six months ago, I got a paper that I generally get uh, of the old 31st Squadron, and there was a story in there about Palmer, and he hadn't been killed. He had landed, and they Japs captured him, and he had been, they turned, they got turned loose after the war was over. And here all these years, I told everybody I knew Palmer was dead. Well, Palmer wasn't dead, and I was wrong. So I got credit for one and a half. Now you know how you get a half a credit? Two guys are shooting at the plane at the same time. If you've seen somebody shoot one down, you wanted to, 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 to verify it. It had to, be, had to be verified. There's a lot of planes that were shot down that wasn't verified, couldn't be, couldn't be verified. The guy I was talking to you about that, that uh, He'd landed in the water, and it was close to the island, and the dolphins have the tendency to push you towards land. Now, if you've got dolphins around you, the sharks, the dolphins, the sharks are afraid of the dolphins. The dolphins, they really know how to butt a shark with their, with their nose, I guess. I don't know that much about it. But anyway, the dolphins were pushing old, uh, oh, what did they build? They pushing him towards land, and he didn't want to go towards land because he knew the black he'd seen the black cat up, what a PB two Y that comes that's always was on a mission with us in case people got shot down. He could land on water and pick you up, and he'd seen the black cat, and he knew the black cat would pick him up, but he didn't want them dolphins pushing him too too close to land because then they start shooting at the black cat. So, but anyway, <laughs> the black cat picked him up, but he said the dolphins were just pushing him towards land, and they say that they will do that all the time. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I, that's what they talked about. Well, it, it was hard. It was just hard. It was just a, it, it, they were shooting at you. They tried to shoot you down just as bad, and the only thing you were trying to do was protect yourself. It wasn't that you was wanting to shoot anybody down, you try to protect yourself so you could get home, but they were trying to shoot you down. The fighter planes, that's their job is to shoot planes down. You know what? I'm mentally, I, I, I was probably about as good as anybody. I never, I never was. Finally, when I come back, they sent me down to the Nut Hospital in Florida. But uh, that never overseas, they, people would get grounded, or, you know, they'd have nervous breakdowns and everything. In fact, I'll tell you, of the ten members of our crew that went overseas, the pilot flew over 80 missions, he just passed away. The tail gunner and I flew 50 missions, and the rest of some of them flew about, one guy flew five missions, and that's all he flew. He said that he just wouldn't fly anymore. And the rest of them flew 37 missions. And they, they got grounded because they were just, mentally, they just were not good. But I, I never, I have to say this in all honesty, I never got scared, I got concerned. And it's like I always tell people, you pray. I'd pray a while and I'd cuss a while and I'd shoot a while. That island, we went up there, and it was a 14-hour mission, and we got a presidential unit citation out of it. And the island, if, if, uh, to play, explain that, I'll say, here's the island, and, and we, we are, are down here starting off. Well, it's, it's it, we go up all the way up here, out of the range of fighters, 
and turn around and come back, and we have the sun to our back, and we slip in, and I can still sit there and see us bombing the runway and everything else, and the fire flying down there, way down there, and just sit there seeing it, and the Japs, a few of them got off, but we were still at probably 20,000 feet. And after we dropped our bombs, see, we we go in about 200 mile an hour, 180, I'd say, maybe. Not, probably 180. But then we could pick up speed and just nose it over just maybe, uh, uh, just a little bit and go to 250. Well, they've got to climb and they couldn't get up there to us. And we never had any interception or anything. The only thing, we had a 14-hour mission. <laughs> The only thing that happened when we come coming, coming home, we were supposed to home in on the, the USS Tangier down here, but they was being bombed so they didn't have the radio on and we got guys lost and everything else. We didn't get lost because our navigator realized, he said that he, he knew something was wrong, but he knew we hadn't passed the island instead of going past the island. Here, back here, he starts this, like going like this. Oh yeah, so, really? so, so we'll see. So, so we we'll see it. the island. Uh -huh. we, we're going to see it. We've seen it. We got in, and we didn't have much gas left. We've landed with a. We we have actually landed airplanes, and just get to the parking area and run out of gas. <laughs> now you can't get much closer than that. Talk to one another and shoot. It's like somebody asked me, "What'd you do?" I said, "Well, I'd shoot a while, pray a while, and cuss a while." Shoot a while, a prayer a while, and cuss a while. <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad, but yeah. yeah. But see, I was down there by myself. I was in yeah. that ball. Yeah, I want to tell you where I. I, I want to tell you probably all the places I wore it was in three. And you got to remember, this was in three years. I was inducted in Fort Benjamin Harrison in Indiana, and they sent me to Florida, to Clearwater, Florida, for basic training. I went to Harlingen, Texas for gunnery training. Then I went to Salt Lake City, Utah for armament training. From Salt Lake City, Utah, I went back down to Tucson, Arizona for first phase of flight training. I went to Almogardo, New Mexico for second phase of flight training. And I went to third, uh, for third phase of flight training, I went to Close, New Mexico. Then I was assigned to Lincoln, Nebraska to, for a while. Now, all these places you lived, you, you was transferred. Then it was Salt Lake City, Utah. I mean, Lincoln, Nebraska. And from Lincoln, Nebraska, we went overseas. We went to uh, Hickam Field, and then I was Hick Hickam Field for I don't know how long. From Hickam Field, I went down to, uh, to the New Hebrides. I forget what base it was there. And from New, New Hebrides base, I went to Guadalcanal. And from Guadalcanal, I went to New Georgia Island. From New Georgia Island, I went to the Admiralty Islands. And from the Admiralty Islands, I went back to, to uh, Hickam Field and was there a few days. And from Hickam Field, I was got a 30-day delay en route in, to the next station, which was Charleston, South Carolina. So I come home for 30 days. From Charleston, South Carolina, I went to Greenville, North Carolina. And from Greenville, North Carolina, I went to Camp Atterbury and was discharged in three years. So that's moving around, isn't it? Okay, I'll tell you what, I was born June the 30th, 1924. Now, I could have been July, July the 1st, I've got to tell you this, because the doctor told my mother, he says, now you can have June the 30th or July the 1st. He was born so close to midnight. And my mother says, well, I want a June bug. So that's how I, that's how I got June the 30th. Now what, uh, let's go a little further. Uh, I was born in an old brick schoolhouse that, that it had been a schoolhouse and they made a house out of it and uh, had high ceilings and still all the brick and, and uh, had a big yard that us kids could play in. 
and we lived there till I, I guess I was about six years old. And uh, then we, we moved further. We moved down the road. My father was a farmer. I was born in the state of Indiana, in Hendricks County, out in, the, out in the country. And my mother had eight children and I was number five. And uh, two of, I had a brother and a sister that died relatively young, but six of us survived. And as of today, there's four of us still living. Oh, when we was when we was young, we just followed our dad around, and he and if we had the milk, we had the milk. If we had to feed the pigs, we fed the pigs. Whatever that my that my dad told us to do, we had we had to do it. And uh, there were chores that we had to do. Like in the evening, we had to bring wood in for the night. We had to bring wood in for the for the day for grandma for mom to cook with. We, she cooked on an old wood stove. And we hit the, we heated the house with uh, in it with an old wood stove because you got to remember I was born during the depression and we didn't have any money to buy coal with in those days. We, I went to school at a, a Hazelwood Elementary School. It was in a little town of Hazelwood. My best story about growing up probably is is uh, that we. With all my brothers and sisters, we just we just had lots of fun of, of doing different things, and uh, I, you know, I, I remember my uncle. I had an uncle Charlie that was quite a character, and uh, he lived in a, out in a barn lot with a, in a, with his trailer, and I loved to go out there and be with Uncle Charlie and ride go places with him. But Mom didn't like it, but I, I got to do it anyway. Well, the one thing we played, we played marbles a lot, by my brothers and my brothers and sisters. But we loved to play marbles in the, in the dirt or any place we could play marbles. And we, we, we always had a dog, and the dog would play with us, and we'd play hide and go seek in the evening. Well, when I was young, uh, uh, we'd buy a, can, a, nickel, a candy bar was a nickel. And a pack of chewing gum was a nickel, and you could get a nickel ice cream cone. And gasoline was 19 cents a gallon. You could buy any place you could buy five gallon of gasoline for a dollar when I was young. Well, uh, uh, the popular thing for us to do was go to the old swimming hole out on the creek. That was one thing that we we loved to do because we'd get take a bar of soap and a towel and we'd go get a bath with it in the swimming in the old swimming pool on the creek. I played basketball and baseball, and I would have probably played football, but we didn't have enough people in school to play football. But we played basketball. I was pretty good at math, or at least I thought I was. And I liked history very well. I can probably still recite the Gettysburg Address and, and the, the old Ironsides. I could, we had to learn that in school. No, we never had any money to travel with. We, we, uh, Stayed at home most of the time, oh, but we did go to Indianapolis. We lived 17 miles from Indianapolis, and my grandmother lived in Indianapolis. And we got to go to Indianapolis about every other Sunday to be with Grandma. That's where my dad's mother lived. I will, I'll tell you a high school story that I, that, uh, I had a commerce teacher, Mrs. Jackson, and I took I helped take care of the school money because I guess I could count pretty good. And uh, one time I went down to the bank with the money and we come up five dollars short. And I went back and told her, I said, now he hunted for that five dollars and he couldn't find it. And I said, I don't have it. And I said, I don't know uh, what we're going to do. She says, well, I'll tell you. If, if you'll find that $5, I'll give you an A. Well, I went back home that night after basketball practice. This was when I was in high school. I went back home after basketball practice, and as I went by the bank, old short Reiners, and he pecked on the bank, and he, I went up there and he said, Jim, he said, I'm $5 over tonight, and it must have been that $5 that we couldn't find that it was stuck together in, in your money you give me. 
And so I, I marched, turned right around, and I marched right my, back up to Mrs. Jackson's house. And I said, I found, we found that $5, and I want my A, and her husband was there. And his name was Hood, Hood Jackson. And Hood said, Jim, why don't you just spread that out for a C and be, and be happy all year? And I said, I'll take the C. So <laughs> I love music. I love music. I'd go to listen to the band practice and to everything, but I, I, never, I never played music. We couldn't afford a music instrument at our house. That's about the truth. That's, that explains a lot of it. But I had a sister. Now, one, I had a sister that could play the piano and she never had a lesson in her life. I didn't have a car, I bought a motorcycle. And I still ride a motorcycle. I would ride one today. I, when I retired, I bought a motorcycle and I rode it and I enjoyed every minute of it. But in fact, I rode from the California border to the Mexican border on along the highway just to see the country. But I think the first car I owned was a 1937 Ford. Two-door two door sedan, a 37. I believe that was, yes, a 1937 Ford. I bought it in 1940. Let's see, I got out of the service in 45. I bought it in 1946. Because cars were not available. There wasn't many cars available. Anything that you bought was used. We met in 1940, I would say 1947 or 48, and we got married in 1949. Ted was born on July the 25th, 1951. Well, if you put us on, in the middle, we was a little below when, yeah. when it come to wealth. We was yeah. kind of poor. And uh, I had an old coal stove there. I, I can see it. I can still see it just as plain as day. I might have told you this story. Well, I was poking in the stove. Yeah, it, 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 you know, they, they, they got a stove board underneath it. So you'll, you'll understand that. And I was poking in the stove. Mom hollered at me. Jimmy, you quit. You quit. Poking in that stove, you're gonna knock them coals out. Well, I quit for a while. She hollered at me. There, I was back there doing it again, and she hollered at me. And I had hot coals out on her carpet, burning her carpet. She come in there, and I can still see her just flipping them hot coals up on the stove board. And there, she had little holes in her carpet. Well, Dad come home, I can remember a little after dark, and she told him what happened. When he got done with me, I never got near that stove again. <laughs> but I, I never messed with any coals after that. <laughs> I was 20, 21 years old when I got out. We got, they got out on the point system. I was out before the war was over, you got to remember that. And the point system, and you got so many points for every decoration, every award you was, you know, and, and I, I received, I think, over 15 medals or awards for combat and things, and I ended up, you, you could get out with 85 points, and I had 121 points, I remember that. I remember when I got out, I come home and was, I was on the farm and I still lived with mom and dad. I didn't, uh, and uh, I, I enrolled in, in college and I went to college two years and I, I don't know, I still don't know why I quit, but I did. It wasn't grades or anything like that. But, and I got a job, I forget where I got a job and uh, I worked a while, and then uh, 40, 48, I, I met Effie, and I was working for an electrician, and we got married in 49, and I still was working for this electrician, and in 49, the, the town that I was grew up in close to needed an electrician, so they hired me. 
and Effie and I moved to, to that town. We had to move there. And uh, in about 1950, I went to work for Allison Division of General Motors, an aircraft division. And uh, in 1951, we had Teddy, and I was still working at, for Allison's. And then, then my dad farmed, and he had a chance to get another farm, and he asked, they asked, he asked me if I would like to help him farm, so I quit Allison's and was helping dad farm, and then they sold the farm, and IBM was had opened a plant in Greencastle, Indiana, not far away. And I went over there and applied for a job, and I got a job there, and I worked there 30 years, and that's where I am today. I went to work for IBM in 1953, I believe. And four years later, the job opened up in California, and uh, my manager called me in the office and asked me if I'd like to transfer to California do basically the same job that I was doing in Indiana, and I said, yes, I would, probably would, but let me go home and talk to Effie. So we went home, we decided we'd go to California, and I, IBM picked up the tab for the whole thing, and we drove, we drove out here. They was kind enough to give us 15 days to get out here, so we traveled along the way and stopped and visited people we knew. And then we got out here in California and we couldn't find our house. Couldn't find the street even. But anyway, we ended up over in Molly's Paradise Inn for another two weeks before our house deal was completed. And then I went to work for IBM out here. It was 1957, I believe. Of 1957, yes, it was. No, that house we lived on Foxworthy, and we lived there eight and a half years, and uh, we've been here ever since. I think it, it adds up to about 46 years we've been in this house. And uh, I, I don't remember everything, but we it was a good trip, and yeah. I, I love my house. Uh -huh. And uh, we were down the street from the school, uh -huh. and uh, so we, I took a job in front of the school as Crossing Kids. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, I don't know how long, a few years, I know. It was an exciting time with all the little kids. They'd come out for lunch, and they'd come out to go to school, and then they'd come out to go to lunch, and then they'd go home in the evening, and it was fun. It was fun. We had a good time. And I enjoyed my home too. I never had a house with a, uh, with a stool and a running water and different things. And I loved my house. Just loved it. God has blessed us thoroughly. <laughs> was it hard for you to move to California? No, no. I was ready to go. I was excited about I, I just... <laughs> hey, Teddy was quite a, an athlete and, I, and he loved to play football and they played tag football and I loved to go and watch him play tag football. And then, then he played football in high school and college. He went to college, he played in, in college and Effie and I, we traveled all over the country following him playing football. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that we we uh, we went with some friends of ours up to a football game for her and Teddy, and there, these friends had a, a dog that, that went with us, and uh, Susie I think was her name, and I was sitting up in the captain's seat with him, Herb was driving, and all at once that dog jumped up in my lap, and she peed in my lap. <laughs> And the boy, everybody started roaring. I said, that dog peed on me. <laughs> and, but anyway, then we, I had to change pants. And Herbie, I, I wore probably a, a 4 of 38, and he wore a probably a 58. 
And I plan to put a his, pair of his pants on now. I look funny running around there. But we got on, and, and Herb's wife, June, she got down on the floor rolling, laughing. It was so funny. After they all laughed at me. When you get when you get peed on, they laugh at you. <laughs> I think I was working on. In, you was working in a restaurant. Yes, I yeah. was. That's how we got acquainted. That's right. How do you go in there every day to eat? Cause I, well, I, I was working for an electrician, right. and uh, the, we ate. We just ate in there. And, and, yeah. And, and sometimes you came in two or three times. Yeah, you know, we'd got to come in for a break, you know, a good break, you yeah. know, on purpose. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and how long have you been married now? 63 years. Wow. Don't fuss and fight. Yeah. The minute you start that, you got problems. Yeah. And we never did. We Did we? We did never we? did. You didn't. It just was not a... I depended on him, and he depended on me. And uh, we agreed on the kids. If the yeah. kids had punishment coming, it was never, never any disagreement on it. No. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? No, it's very important. It's, it's, it's just about as important as you can get. Because I think if you fuss and fight, we it really. doesn't do the kids any mm -hmm. good whatsoever. Right. And we didn't ever fuss and fight, uh -uh, did we? Uh -uh, no. -uh. And you guys. I saw you driving one day, it wasn't that long ago, and you were laughing, both of you laughing in the car. <laughs> you didn't see me, but I thought you guys laugh a lot. Have you always had fun together and yeah. laughed a lot? Yeah. That's great. I've never had to go someplace else to, to have a good time. Is that right? That's great. We always... Good. He's always been good to me, and I think I've been good to him. Epi, do you remember your wedding day? Cartersburg, we were married in Cartersburg, weren't we? In our church. Yeah, in your church. Mm -hmm. It was just very simple. I've got to, I'll, I'll tell you this, if, if, you, if, you, if you want to hear this, we had two preachers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, everybody would ask, why did you have two preachers? And I would tell everybody, well, she was a Methodist and a Democrat, and I was a Baptist and a Republican. <laughs> it took two preachers, but that wasn't the reason. The guy she wanted to marry us was not an ordained minister, mm -hmm. and we had to have an ordained minister, and, and, and uh, so we had the other guy. The, Mose, who was not ordained, married us, but he couldn't sign the papers. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, that's what I'd tell him. Oh, that's funny. And so where did you go for your honeymoon? Well, home to work the next day. But anyway, I'll go back to, to, to IBM, and I, 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 I worked out here for 30 years, or I retired in 1984. So I've been retired about as long as I worked. In fact, I've got my money out of them. Uh, but I, I had some great jobs at IBM. Uh, the last job I had for 10 or 12 years was traveling uh, practically all over the world. And uh, uh, I, I enjoyed that to, to an extent, but it gets old too. But uh, in most of my career at IBM, I would have went to work some days if they hadn't have paid me because I knew that we were going to have some fun. My primary job, I was what they called a, a QAR man, quality assurance representative. And I worked with manufacturing and purchasing. And our job was to, to go in most generally and uh, if they were having problems and try to solve the problems for the, for the manufacturing parts that IBM put in the computers. And uh, if they were having problems, why? Well, Everybody had to sign off on that, that that the problem was solved, and then we would go on. And uh, sometimes it wasn't easy. I've had to stay for weeks some places and, and work and to try to get the the problem solved. See, they man had parts manufactured all over the world, and and we try we tried to dual manufacture parts at two different companies because if one had a strike 
or one went down for some problem, we'd still be have our tail covered. It's not cheap to do it that way, but that's... When you say all over the world, what, what parts of the world? Uh, I was in Korea and Japan and uh, places like that and uh, in the east, not the far east, but uh, I, I, pr I didn't particularly like to go there, but I, uh, and when uh, the boss hired somebody else, he asked me, he says, will you get rid of what you want to get rid of and give to him? And that's the first thing I give to him. Well, on the first trip he had to stay in, I think in Japan, three, three weeks, and he come back and he, he come in there and he lamb blasted me and I just roared at him. And, but he, we, he, he was, it was all in humor, but he said, I will never follow you again. <laughs> oh, but the, Back in those days, it it was I, it was excellent. My I I very I was very fortunate. I had one great boss that that uh, he would uh, any time trouble came, if I couldn't find him, well, I'd still just up and go, and and he, that's what they told me to do to go, and and they would take care of everything later. Because as you know, it's hard to get out of the country, and or it's hard to to get plane tickets and everything, and we'd get. The secretary and she'd set everything up and you'd get out of there if you had to because ever, sometimes you you had you really had problems that that you had to be taken care of real quick i remember one incident back east i think it was minnesota and the union was going out on strike and they shut these places down well we had dyes in there that was making parts for us and we had to get in there and get the dyes out. We had two taxi cabs out there loaded with dyes, getting them out of there before they shut the plant down because you couldn't get anything out afterwards. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, and I met so many great people. I met so many great people. I met good, good people, Christian people that, that, uh, uh, I, I, you know, IBM had a philosophy that you couldn't take anything over a dollar or you could get dismissed. Well, even my boss and I, we were back east one time, and a guy made, made, had, was making his own wine. Well, he gave us a, a bottle of wine each to bring home with us. We got home, my boss looked into it, and we had to turn the wine back in for a bottle of homemade wine. So you couldn't accept uh, uh, anything from a from a customer or, or worth more than a dollar. Worth more than a dollar, yeah. Uh, we did. There was an outfit in Chicago that made the the clips for ballpoint pens, and the ballpoint pen cost over a dollar. But the, the 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 guy that was making the clip said it didn't cost him a dollar to get the pen, so. I got two or three pens from him, uh -huh. but it was uh, unique in that way. And and they and and they they practiced it back then. I know some guys that took a a, a big block of cheese and he got fired. Well, after I retired from IBM, we bought us a motor home. We had bought a a twenty eight foot Winnebago, and we decided that we'd travel. <clears throat> and after we retired, two years later. So we met these friends of ours, they've both passed away now, in El Paso, Texas, and we followed them all down the, the, the southern border of the United States, and all, and they're down around the Florida, uh, each side of Florida, back up the East Coast. And we left them in Florida, and, but we, uh, then we travel, went to Indiana, and then we come back up on top of top the United <laughs> States and across the Canadian border and back down the, the West Coast, and we were gone six months the first time. And uh, we, uh, we we seen a lot of the country, because I says I'm a firm believer that you could travel the rest of your life. I gave you 50 years and you'd never see the United States. Well, yeah, they had a motor home as well. And then we come back and we would had planned to be gone a year the next time and, and go through the middle of the country and see the middle of the country, you know, as well as you could in a year's time. 
And uh, we got back east, and I got to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. No, I got into Virginia, and I started having some chest pains. And uh, the guy told me I shouldn't probably go on home. He didn't, didn't think I was having a heart attack or anything, but I went to emergency. And I met my, uh, we stopped at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and seen my niece, and then we went on to Indiana. And I decided I better get home, so I bought two plane tickets, and Effie and I flew home and left the motor home in Indiana. Well, we got back here, and Jackie and Herb took the other half of the tickets, and they, they came back to, uh, went back to Indiana and picked up the motor home. And their, their summer, see, that was summer for them. They were both off, so they used the motor home all summer. Got back here, and uh, later on, why, a, a year later, I had open heart surgery. But I see I didn't realize that that my heart was acting up. But uh, I went in and had a a treadmill, and as Jennifer says, you flunked that, Grandpa. And then I went in and had a, a angiogram, and I flunked that. She said, so they did open heart surgery. What year was that? Nineteen, I I, I believe it was nineteen ninety two. Then I had knees operated on and. The, is why I just, I'm glad I come home. <laughs> well, I, I still have a good outlook on life. I enjoy getting up and getting to read the paper, and uh, the thing, things have changed. And, and uh, the, as as you age, things change in every aspect of your life, whether you you, you want to face it or not. But they do. I have to watch my salt intake. I've been in the hospital since. January three or four different times having a Ted, and it's due to to my salt intake. And I, I'm a, as I say, I, I, I'm kind of dumb about some things. That I think I've caught on this time. That uh, you you have to watch. I, I look at every everything. I, the sodium that's on everything I take now and eat, and uh, I've backed off on meat a lot. I love beef. I love I love ham. I, I, I could eat ham every day, but you know it's loaded with salt. So, and uh, therefore, I do eat a steak once in a while because I can put my own salt on it, and and uh, it isn't as salty as ham. But uh, uh, eating eating has been my, my, one of my greatest changes here because I. I, I, as you know, I come from Indiana, and if you can't fry it, you can't eat it. <laughs> Yo, I love. Did you ever have that? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, listen, that town I come from is noted for catfish on Friday night. They've got them lined up all the way back around the, the, the restaurant to the church and you you wouldn't believe it they, uh, and it's all that's, you can eat all you can eat for right. 750 right. fried catfish yep. and uh, you, it's yeah. it's uh, something isn't it yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I don't eat that <laughs> <laughs> but it was good oh guys it's good my, now my oldest brother uh, Bob, he used to he'd he'd go out to Clayton every night, every Friday night, eat catfish. His wife would, but it didn't seem to hurt him because he lived to be ninety three. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite sport is probably when I was a kid it was basketball, but I, I have to say now it's football. I I just I love football, and, and I never played it one one day in my life. I probably couldn't have as as skinny and as weak as weak as I was, but. I did play basketball. I played basketball in high school and was a fair, fair basketball. A lot of people thought I was good, but I didn't. But uh, a lot of people thought I was good, but uh, uh, I just was average. Probably not even average, but it was fun anyway. But I love football, and and uh, well, now coming from San Francisco, <laughs> it wouldn't be L.A. <laughs> San Francisco. All right. Yeah. I, I think they've got a good situation now. I really do. I love automobile. I love automobile racing. I love. I love automobile racing. Any kind? No, not just any kind. I love the 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 the, the five hundred was it used to be a, a special for me because I, I I attended about twenty five years in a row, and uh, 
but uh, stock car, I enjoy stock car racing. I, I think you get your money's worth really watching them. I was born a Baptist. Yeah. Your I accepted were... the Lord when I was approximately 11 years old. After I would accepted the Lord when I was about 12 years old, let's see, we moved up there, I was about 12 years old. Uh, I could drive a car and uh, I'd go to prayer meeting. I could take mom to prayer meeting and I, I'd, I'd love to go to prayer meeting because I got to drive the old car down to the church, mom and I, and we'd come home. And uh, boy, that was big time stuff at 12 years old. <laughs> Jesus and I have trouble all the time. Yeah. You know, I, what he wants me to do and what I do, it just drives me bananas. So I, I, you know, I, I try to do what the Lord wants me to do, but boy, at times I get all screwed up big time. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 just hey, just to get, just to get back and, and say, Lord, help me. Yeah. I, I I have to. I I say, Lord, forgive me, yeah. and and I know He will. Yeah. But that's the first thing I say. Oh, Lord, you've got to forgive me for this. You know, I, I, I've I've basically I've continued to. To believe like a Baptist, and most of the churches I've gone to have uh, are similar. Right. I've been going to the Christian church, right. and uh, but, but they still believe in immersion and communion yes. and and, and ever. In fact, I, I like the Christian church, but, but primarily because of communion every Sunday. Yes. And the Baptist is quarterly. Uh -huh. Some Baptists are. I, the, the ones I went to were quarterly. But uh, I, 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 I like that communion because it gives you a time to meditate and think and appreciate and uh, respect the Lord. I, 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 see, I, I understand Easter as, as most Christians do. You know, it's the death and the resurrection of our Lord, and that's, it's, just, it's just amazing. To me, I, uh, to, to, to even think that anybody could die and come back. And, and uh, the, the honor that we're going to have today is someday to meet the Lord. It, it, that just blows my mind. Because I, I know I'm not going to, I, I think at times what I will say, but I know that when the, the questions he's going to ask me are not, the answers are not going to be good probably. And because of where I've failed him, I see. I, I okay. I'll tell you. I believe the Bible, one hundred percent. You know, when you get done and you get to the end of Revelations and you read Revelations, it tells you what you've got to do. Yeah. Every T was crossed, every I was dotted, and we have to accept that now. And I believe it. Sometimes I have doubts, but I think I will as long as I live. But uh, sometimes I, I, I believe I believe it. I believe Jonah was in the whale for three days. I believe lots and all of them was turned to pillars of salt. Now, well, to start off with my mother, she seen that we went to church, and she seen that we went to Sunday school, and. Uh, but she was probably, uh, the, the, when I was younger, she was the strongest. And, and later on, I can remember after I accepted the Lord, old Dr. Cobb and his wife in the church, they helped me grow. And and uh, and that was the main thing. And, and later in life, it has just been the ministers at each church has helped me. Now, I don't fall in love with a minister because I know he's human, and I don't want him to fall in love with me because we can screw up big time. Oh, I'm, I'm, it has, it has today. I'm probably more dogmatic than I've ever been in my life today. But, I, you know, as I talk to people, the older you get, the more conservative you get. Like oh, I've, absolutely, absolutely. Ab I, th I think when I was going to, to, to uh, church when I was younger, 
and Effie probably would too if, if what was going on, if, if we'd have found out about something like that going on, the church would have went crazy. I remember uh, Billy Graham's daughter one night, she quoted something out of the Bible and the guy started after her and says, don't jump after me. She says, that's all, that's what the Bible says. And I, and I thought, boy, now that, that she, cut, she shut him off quick. He, nobody's ever going to change my mind about it. Yeah. But well, there's a way out. There's, yeah. There's a way out. That's... <laughs> The way out is to, to repent and, and, and accept the Lord. That's what Paul said. He, 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 he went through all of that, and, he, and there's a but. There's but there. There's a preposition there. And there's always a preposition before every answer. <laughs> Trying to impress on them to be honest, tell the truth. And uh, if they do that, they will... Just, just be honest. It's, it's, it's hard. It's at times it's hard to be honest. <laughs> it's at times I don't care who you are. I, the minute that I have one of those situations where I have did what I shouldn't do, I just, I just say, Lord, forgive me. That's, that's the only thing I can think, because I, I know. I know I screwed up big time, and the only thing you've got to do is ask the Lord to forgive you, and and uh, you know, and, and and I pray about it later on. But right then, I I can't pray about it. I've got to to, to, to tell him, just ask me to forgive me, because I, I just you just do it. I don't know, it, you know. I tell you, most of it you do on the spur of the moment. You don't get to think about it. You just automatically mouth off, and you shouldn't. I have learned patience, patience, patience. Yes. That's that is the one thing that that I I I ask the Lord in my prayers for patience because I know I need it, yes. and uh, I don't I don't know whether He has given me better, more patience or not. But I, at times I think He has, and then at times. Boy, I, I don't know about this, Lord. Kid, the kids have never caused me one minute's problem. L L L Ricky Dinks, well, I'm very fortunate. I've had a, a good three kids and a good wife, and nobody could, could be that lucky.
little sound test. What? Give me, just uh, repeat your name or something. Just oh, little... uh, Jim Walls. Okay, I'll go ahead and say it again. Jim Walls. Can you say your name again, please? Just say your name. Jim Walls. Picking up whatever it's Can you it's say your name again? Right. Jim Walls. I, I, I think of Paul. He had the same problem. And when I, when I get to reading in, in Romans and, and places like that, I say, Oh, I'm just, we just sat down here and they started, so they probably know what they're doing, Effie.